Hey everybody, this is a very quick tutorial for Blender to get you up and started as quickly as possible. And so in this uh, little tutorial, we're going to build a very, very simple, basic castle here and just show you how to um, work with objects and start creating some things. But before we get started creating things, uh, the very first thing I want to do is talk about selection. Um, by default, Blender actually uses the right mouse button for selecting. And for people that are very new to Blender, uh, that can be kind of a bit strange because you're used to clicking with the left mouse button. But if you do that, this little um, red and white, kind of like a life preserver um, symbol, is moves around. Uh, we won't get into that, but specifically want to deal with the selection. Now you can change that, uh, and I suggest that you do if you are used to um, clicking with things with your left mouse button, by just going to File, User Preferences, and then in the dialog that comes up, make sure that Input is selected, and then you'll see right here, Select With, and just click on the left then save your user settings and close that dialog. Now you can select objects and lights. This is a light and that's the camera. And you can select things just by left clicking. Okay, the next thing that you want to know with respect to Blender is that no matter what you do as you move things around, if you make mistakes, um, you don't worry about that too much because you can always save your work as you might know but the interesting thing here if you're just playing around is you can play around and you can always get back to the default by selecting new file new and then reload the startup file so when you started up blender it probably looked like this and this is the um, default startup file so you can always get back to that okay now, having said that, um, we're going to go ahead and build the castle, and I'm going to introduce things as we need them, not walk through all the different commands um, up front. We're going to learn them as we use them. So the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and get rid of this cube. So if you've um, set your mouse to select with the left button, then go ahead and left click on this cube. Now, if you want to deselect an object, all you need to do is press the A key, and it will deselect de everything. If you press it again, it will select everything. Press it again, it will um, deselect everything. So no matter whether you've selected the camera, if you press A, it will deselect it, or the light, or, or objects, you just press A and it will deselect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press, click on the cube and select that, and then press the X key and that allows us to delete. So when we press X, we can delete. Now I'm not going to delete that one, but notice over here on the left hand side we've got these tabs, tools, create, rotations, and a number of different things. And so underneath tools you can also select the object and click on delete. And that way you can delete that way as well. So now that we've deleted that cube, what we want to do is create the towers of the castle. So I'm going to go and underneath those tabs again I'm going to select create and notice you've got a lot of uh, basic objects that you can use and so you can create a lot of um, uh, simple objects just using these basic primitives. So we're going to select a cylinder and now it places it in the middle. So now what we want to do is we want to move that cylinder to one of the corners of this grid here. And to do that, if you'll notice, you've got the, this um, object axis. And as we move down to the bottom of the viewport, you'll look here and there's you see an axis kind of showing up there. And there's an arrow. And that means that we're the um, axes that we have are for transformation or movement. And the way that we can move the object, I can click on the object, and if I'm not clicking on an axis, I have kind of free movement to move that object around. If I click on an axis, it will move it in a constrained way. So, for example, I clicked on the blue axis, and now it will move it up and down. If I click on the green axis, it moves it 
uh, the way the green axis shows, and then red. And so it goes in that red direction. So you can see the directions it's going to move things. So I'm going to move it kind of over in that up, upper corner. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the details of, of the positioning quite yet. So let me show you the other thing is if I click on this curve, I can rotate it. Now I'm not going to rotate this one, um, so I could drag on the red or the green or the blue and rotate it. And the other one uh, axes, if they've got a square on it, that's actually scaling. So we want, we're just going to do the kind of movement right now. And so I'm going to click on the one that has an arrowhead. Okay. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to move that cylinder um, to the upper left. And that's where I want it to be. Now what we want to talk about is a couple of uh, keys that allow us to look at the um, our set of objects in standard ways. And what we'll use is the num keypad, the, the number pad. So if I press 1 on the number pad, we see that um, it takes us to a front view. If I press 3, it takes us to a side view. And if I press 7, it takes us to the top view. So I can kind of go back and uh, forth between those different views there. All right, so in this top view, I'm going to move uh, the cylinder so that it looks to me like it's about um, one, one two um, uh, squares in, and then one, two squares up. So I'm going to move it up a little bit with the green. Okay, And like I said, I'm not worrying too much about positioning. I'm just showing you how to use these things. All right, so now let's go to the front view by pressing the one key. Now notice here, we've got the horizon so that here's where the grid is. And you can see that our cylinder is floating a little bit above this grid. Now, if you're not really familiar with 3D, working with 3D objects, what's happening now is you've got a perspective view. And so that's why it doesn't really look um, like a cylinder a little bit. Um, uh, but that's just because of the perspective view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that blue arrow and drag the cylinder down until it aligns on that surface. And I can go back to the top view and we can see and then the side view and just see different uh, perspectives of it. Alright, now that we've got this selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another cylinder. And to do that, I could um, go in here and click Cylinder to create another one. Or another thing that I can do, now that the cylinder is selected, I can go to Tools and I can actually duplicate that. And so I'm going to duplicate it. And now, uh, once I've clicked on Duplicate, I've got another object showing up. And so I'm just going to move to try to position it to some place. And so I'm going to position it similar to what I did um, with the other cylinder. And I'm going to go back to my one view, the front view, and to see if the height looks right. And the height does look OK. So I'm going to go back to the top view. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both cylinders and duplicate them. So let me go ahead and click on the left cylinder. Now I'm going to press Shift, not Control, like you might think of in a Windows uh, type environment, um, but I'm going to press shift and then click on the other cylinder. So now both of them are selected. Now I'm going to go back and click duplicate again. Now notice when I highlight the duplicate uh, button, there's a shortcut that says shift D. So you could use that shortcut and pay attention to that as you select different things um, in the window. So I'm going to click duplicate and again we see that we've got those um, cylinders duplicated and we're just going to place them um, on the grid where we think is an appropriate place. Now I can go back to the front view or to the side view and the top view. So those look like they're well placed. Again, the shape of it may look a little strange to you if you're not very familiar with working with 3D, but again, that's the perspective view. Okay. If you've worked with computer programs, you know that it's very important to save your work frequently uh, in case you make a mistake or things crash. So I'm going to go over here and select File 
and Save As. I've got a couple of things already saved here, and I'm just going to call this Castle. I already have a Castle simple, and that's what I would have called this, um, but I'm just going to call it Castle now. And click, uh, select Save as Blender File. Okay, so now we can see that we've got this file saved as Castle. Now what I want to do is I want to create the walls. So to do that, I'm going to select Create, and I'm going to select Cube. Now I could do Plain, um, but we're just going to do a cube, and then I'll show you how to work with that. So as we select Cube, notice that it puts it in the center. And so if I go to the front view, we see it's kind of down low. Um, so I'm in the front view, and I'm going to raise it up so it's level with the grid, or close to level. I'm not worried too much about that. Now the thing that I want to do is I want to actually move the edge of that face. So to do that, we're going to go into edit mode. Now up until this point, we've been working in object mode. And you can tell that if I look near the bottom here, and it says object mode. And if I click on that, I can go to edit mode. Not going to quite do that yet. I'm going to stay in object mode for a little bit. But I just want to let you know that it's in edit mode where we're going to actually change the shape. Now while I'm in object mode, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to look at the viewport instead of just having the 1, 7, and 3 views. I want to uh, look at the view a little bit differently. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the middle mouse button and drag. And now when I drag, I'm rotating um, the whole um, scene. If I pressed shift first and then press the middle mouse button and move, then I can pan the scene. So if I'm not pressing shift, I can rotate the scene. If I press shift first, then I can pan or move the scene around. So that allows me to move things around a little bit. Now, no matter where I am, I can go back to the uh, number pad and get back to those original views that I was interested in. And the other thing that I can do for the whole scene is if I have a mouse wheel, I can roll that mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, so now that I can kind of see this cube a little bit more, more than just a couple of faces, what I want to do is I'm going to change this to be more of a wall shape than just a cube. So to do that, I'm going to go down where it says object mode, and I'm going to change it to edit mode. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press control and then tab, and you can see that this uh, mesh select mode comes up. And what I'm going to do is select face. Now I can go in and I can click on a face. Now I can move that face by itself. And so if I'm going to drag on this green uh, arrow, I'm going to make it a thin kind of wall. So let's say that my walls are about that thin. Let me zoom in a little bit and then uh, pan. So I'll make it however thick I want. So let's say that I want the walls to be about that thick. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to um, make the wall longer so that it goes from one cylinder to the next. So I'm just going to go in and select a different face and now drag that side out. So I'm going to drag the left side. Then I'm going to move around and select the other face and drag it out so that it will intersect the cylinder. If you look at the grid here, we can see, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, it comes to the edge, past the edge of the cylinder. Okay, so now I can go back to object mode, and I can now move that object around. And we can see that it's a little bit high. So let me zoom in a little bit more. A little bit high, so I'm going to pull this down a little bit. Now notice I had made that mistake and accidentally um, lifted that up a little bit. So we can fix that by just moving the object back away with this green. 
rotating around a little bit. Let me zoom out. And again, going back to edit mode, selecting that face, and then just dropping it down just a tiny bit so that I had made a mistake by uh, lifting it up a little bit. Now I go back to object mode, and now I can drag this up and down however I want. I'm going to go to the top view, and I'm going to drag it so that it intersects the cylinder there. Scroll out a little bit. Now notice we've got a little bit of rotation here. Okay, so we can fix that by changing uh, the object mode from um, this kind of uh, translation view to the rotation view. And again, let me get the view that I want. And I'm going to just twist it a little bit. Just play with that until it looks how I, I want it to look. Okay, now go back to the translation and I can move it in and out however much I, I want. Now one thing to notice, um, if you are having difficulty, so let me uh, go back to this rotation, and let's say you're just wanting to rotate it a little bit, and it's just seeming like, ah, it's too hard to do that, press the shift key, and it will make your m movements a lot smaller, and so that you can have a little bit more fine, fine movement. Okay, so I'm going to go back and make sure I've got the translation axes selected, and again, press shift in the middle mouse wheel to, to pan a little bit, and I'm going to rotate a little bit. Now I'm just going to take that wall and duplicate it. Again, I can go back to the tools and duplicate. Now I can move that wall down here, and then I'll just position it later. I'll duplicate that wall again. Let me just uh, drag that around. Let me zoom, shift, and uh, drag that in a better position. And now what I want to do, of course, is to rotate that. So I'll select the blue and rotate it around. And again, I can use the shift if I need. Go back to translation and move it over. And we'll position them a little bit better in just a second. Okay, and again, I'm going to duplicate that one and move it over here. So now things have been placed fairly quickly. I go back to my orthographic views and I go to the front view. And I'm going to select this and drop it down. I'm going to the top view and looks like that needs to be rotated some so I will select the rotation and press shift so at first the, the blue line is not showing up so I just press the middle mouse wheel and change my view a little bit until that blue shows up and I'm just going to rotate it just a little bit and do the same thing for the other wall now I'm going to go back to, let's say, let's go to the three, uh, the side view by pressing num key three and go to the selector and select a blue arrow and drop it down. And go back to the top view and see what it looks like. And let's just rotate things around here. I'm going to select this back wall and pull it back with the red. Press the middle mouse and rotate. And drag that blue. And again press shift for just a little bit of movement. And then let's go back to this, this wall here. Select it and center it up a little bit better. And there we go. We've got the basics of a castle. I can 
you know, keep working on this a little bit better. This edge should come to the middle a little bit more. But that's, that's what you do, is you just need to tweak it a little bit. So this is a basic introduction. Uh, don't forget to save your file again. File, save. And so that's the basic introduction to the uh, most important primitives. And we didn't get to all the shortcuts and everything else like that. But that's the basics of how you can create things in Blender. Uh, I hope that was helpful.